Is your Lightroom culling process all over the place? Whether you have no system or it's just time to get your shit together, today I'm gonna show you the tools to organize your images. What's up? My name is Jay LeBlanc, wedding photographer and photo video educator. Today we're gonna take a look at all the features that Lightroom has built into it for culling and filtering our images. I'm gonna show you my exact process that I go through every time that I do a shoot and how I call my images and how I quickly and very easily able to find everything using the exact same system, no matter what type of shoot it is. So first I'm gonna show you some of the features that Lightroom has to offer on how to cull and filter images. And then I'm gonna show you my exact workflow. So let's jump into Lightroom and check that out. Now for all the ways that we can cull an image, I love to use keyboard shortcuts. So throughout this entire video, I'm gonna be showing you how to do these things using keyboard shortcuts just to speed up your workflow. So here we are inside of Lightroom. And first let's check out a couple different ways that we can cull a picture. One way, would be star ratings. Star ratings, we can just click on a picture and we can hit one for one star, two for two stars, three, four, five, you get the picture, right? Okay, cool. Then we get zero for zero stars. If your picture sucks, leave it at zero stars. Another option we have are the flags. Flags are very simple. Although they call them flags, we're really picking or unpicking a picture. And I'm gonna show you in a second. So if we see an image that we like, a way we can pick it is hitting P. P flags it as a pick. Okay, if we hit U, that removes our flag. And then we have the option of X, which sets it as rejected. So we have three different types of flags. We have a pick flag, we have no flag, which I don't really think that counts as a flag. We're gonna go no, but we can filter for it, and I'll show you that in a minute. And then we have rejected, which means this thing sucks, get it out of here. And the last way we can color our pictures is with color labels. And we have the option of clicking on an image and we can hit six, which gives us red, seven gives us yellow, eight gives us green, and nine gives us blue. Now there are other color options, but they don't have a keyboard shortcut by default, but you can set that up if that's something that you're interested in. All right, cool. So that's a quick little overview of three different ways that we can call our images in Lightroom. Now I'm gonna go over a couple different ways that we can filter our images in Lightroom. First, we're gonna look down here on the bottom. We have all these filters, including some of the ones that we just talked about of ways we can call an image. So first being our flags. So we can filter by showing only our flagged images, our unflagged images or our rejected images. And you can actually select multiple of these at a time. So I can show all of my flagged or unflagged images at the same time. And that way it would hide only my rejected images. So if I click on flagged, it would show all my flagged images. Because I don't have any images currently flagged in this folder, there's nothing there. But if I do click on my unflagged, nothing's changing because everything is currently unflagged. Next, we have an option of showing images that have been exported. So it's gonna show images based on their status. Has it been exported or has it not been exported already? This is a good way of understanding, have you sent this picture to your clients already or not? So I'm gonna click on images that have been exported. So this is from a wedding that I recently did and these are the images from the same day sneak peek. And you can actually see down here how many images are part of what's being filtered out. So it's showing that this is 68 of 4,055 images that have been exported already. And on the other hand, we can click on this, which shows how many images have not been exported. Now, like I said earlier, we can apply multiple filters. So right now I have images that have been exported and images that have not been exported. So obviously that's gonna be all my pictures because it's one or the other. So let me just turn off the ones that have been exported and it's going to show us, if we look down here on the left side again, how many images that we're looking at. And these are all the ones that have not been exported. Next up, we have the option to look at pictures that have been edited and pictures that have not been edited. This is another good way of filtering out your images so you know what has already been treated and what has not. So we can click on ones that have been edited and then we can click on ones that have not been edited. And once again, you can use multiple filters at a time. So you wanna make sure that you are clicked on the things that you only wanna see. Next, we have different star ratings. And this one gets a little interesting here. So I'm gonna click on two stars. And you'll see in a minute why I'm clicking on two stars as part of my calling workflow, but I'll get to that in a minute. And over here to the left of the stars, you have this little greater than and then a line. So what we're looking at is any rating that is greater than or equal to two stars. 
Now I can also do rating is less than or equal to my two stars or rating is equal to two stars. Now in this folder, the only thing I have is either two stars or nothing. So if I clicked on rating is less than or equal to two stars, it's gonna show me all my pictures. Because like I said, everything is either two stars or nothing. So if I click on this, rating is greater than or equal to, it's gonna show me everything that's two stars or more. And this one is the one I probably use the most often. And again, I will show you that in a minute. Next up, we have all of our different color options that we just talked about. Let's say one of these images was red. I'm just gonna quickly set that image as red. If I click on red, that'd be the one image that we see. I'm just gonna undo that. So to undo a color label, you just hit the same number again as the keyboard shortcut. So red is six. If I wanna get rid of my label red, I would just hit six again. Next up, we have three little buttons that could be very useful. The first one being the original photos. This is gonna show you just the original images. Next up, we have virtual copies. If you're somebody who makes a lot of virtual copies, we can look at just the virtual copies inside of Lightroom. And last up, we have videos. If you, for some reason, are storing or organizing your videos inside of Lightroom, we can look at just those video files as well. Maybe you're a hybrid shooter and you're shooting photo and video at the same time. This could be useful for you if you wanna separate just your pictures and your videos. And then for a couple more filtering options, we could come up here to the top. When we're in our library view, there's a few options up here at the top. We have text, attribute, metadata, and none. And if you don't see these options inside of your library view, all you have to do is click on view up at the top and you'll go to show filter bar. And by default, I believe it is turned off. So you would just wanna go ahead and turn that on and you'll be able to see this. The first one being text. Text can come in handy if you are keywording your images and naming them and you wanna look something up. Maybe you're looking at a giant Lightroom catalog and you wanna quickly look up pictures from your trip to the Grand Canyon. Well, I could just type in Grand Canyon if you keyworded it properly and we can find all those images really quick. I personally don't really use this one other than when I'm making albums, but that's for another video. My light just turned off. Back in action. Can't believe my light just turned off on me in the middle of my video. How dare it? I actually died because it's been on for a couple hours because I was setting up my studio for recording and totally forgot that I had some other things to take care of and I just left that light on and it died. Oh well, we live and we learn. Next up for our filters, we have attributes. So this basically brings up the exact same bar that we have down here on the bottom. So I don't really use that one because I just leave the one in the bottom open all the time because that's available in different views as well. This filter bar is only available if I'm in the grid view. If I happen to go into the loop view, so let's say I want to enlarge one of these images, the filter bar on the bottom is still available, but we lose that filter bar on the top that's only available in the grid view, which is why I tend to just favor this one because it is available in multiple views. Next up, we have metadata. I find this to be extremely useful, especially when I'm shooting with second shooters, because I can quickly filter between different cameras, different lenses, or whatever little information I'm trying to look for. Now you have a lot of flexibility here. By default, you have camera, lenses, focal length, and flash state. Yours might even look different if you've ever played with this by accident. But what we can do is any one of these categories, I'm gonna go to flash state. If we hover over where it says flash state and we click on it, we have all these other options that pop up of things that we can filter by. Maybe I want to filter by shutter speed. Now it brings up all the different shutter speeds from all the different images that are shown below. Maybe we want to filter by camera serial number. This is extremely useful if you are shooting with multiple of the same camera bodies. That way you know which pictures came from which body. This really comes in handy for me working with second photographers at weddings when we're all shooting with the same cameras and I need to timestamp all the images and sync them correctly. I try and make sure at the beginning of the day that the time in all of our cameras is synced properly so all the pictures just flow nice and naturally inside of Lightroom, but it doesn't always happen. You can adjust the capture time inside of Lightroom, and that's what I'll often do for my second shooter's cameras, especially at weddings where they're not necessarily starting with me. Often my second shooter starts with the guys, so I can't time sync our cameras because they're at a different location. So it's very easy to just come to Lightroom I filter by camera and I set all the cameras to a certain point. 
at a wedding is usually pretty easy because I just filter it to the kiss. I find my main camera body. I'd look at the timestamp on it for what time the kiss happened, and I just adjust every camera accordingly. If this is helping you at all, I would love it if you could just give me a thumbs up, leave a comment below about any other questions that you have, and I'll gladly get back to you on it. Now, another option for filtering within Lightroom is we can do smart collections. I personally don't use these, but I just want to show you in case it's something you might be interested in. If we come over to collections, we can hit plus, we can create smart collection, and over here we can make any type of smart collection we want, basically. So we can, let's say we want it by rating, anything that is greater than or equal to two stars. Now I'm not going to create it, but what this would do is take all the images that are rated at two stars or greater and put them into this collection. So it's nice and easy to find. You can use it for if they're exported, the flag picks, the color types, everything that we just talked about for calling purposes, we can use that to create a smart collection. Now, I'm going to show you how I would go about culling. When it comes to culling for me, I keep it to a pretty simple process. I use star rating. For the star rating, I'm going to set everything by default that I think is a good picture to two stars. And that's what I'm going to edit. And then as I'm going through my editing process, if I have two pictures that are very, very similar, I'm going to drop one of those two star pictures down to one, just meaning it's still good, but I'm just not delivering it. Usually during family formals, I'm shooting 10 pictures of the exact same scene. They don't need 10 pictures of everybody standing there looking at me smiling, but maybe one of those pictures somebody blinked. So then I just go to one of my one star images and find the image where the person's not blinking and use that one instead. Then going the other way, anything that I want to set as like a highlight to my couple or post to my blog would be three stars. Three stars are images that I think are a little bit more interesting, part of telling the story or something that I want to share. That's where I'll use my three stars. Above that, we go to four. After three comes four. We're counting, we're learning today, all right. Four stars are what I consider something to be a really good image. These are my banger shots. These are the ones that I'm going to potentially take and put into my portfolio. And then we have five stars. Five stars are like, yep, definitely, this is a portfolio worthy image. I'm going to take this picture, I'm going to put it in my portfolio, I might even print it and hang it on my wall because I love it so much. Five stars very rarely happen, I maybe have one or two in an entire calendar year, but that's just my rating system. Then the only other thing that I use for culling is colors. I don't use red, I'm just not a huge fan of the color red, so I just don't use it. And because six is too close to five on the keyboard and I don't want to accidentally hit them when I am trying to organize all my images. I do use yellow. Yellow, I use for all my vendors. I take a lot of pictures of other vendors throughout the wedding day, and I like to share those images with the vendors. It helps them out, gives them some good behind the scenes content, stuff for them to post to social media, and it just creates a good working relationship. But for me to easily organize and find all that stuff, I just set it as yellow. So I know inside of my Lightroom catalogs, if I go to all pictures and I click yellow, it's just gonna show me behind the scenes pictures of people working. Then I have green and blue. Green and blue I use for when it comes to making an album. When I'm making a wedding album for a couple, I use green for all of the pictures that they select. My wedding album process is I send the pictures to the couple and they pick out 30, 40, 50 pictures that they like that they want in their wedding album. I go into the Lightroom catalog, I flag those all as green. This lets me know what I need to look at in detail to make sure it is perfect for a wedding album. Hey, what's up? Editor Jay here real quick and I just wanted to add a little something in this to explain in a little better detail my album process. When I'm doing the album, this is when I use that text search feature. I personally use Pixie Set and it allows my clients to go into their wedding gallery and create a favorites folder. And then on the back end, I can go and copy all of the file names and then I bring it over into Lightroom and I search for those file names and it brings up all the pictures that the couple has favorited. And this allows me to very quickly and easily find those images and then I flag them for green for the wedding album. Then I like to add some of my own pictures to a wedding album. This just helps fill out this album, tell the story of the day. Sometimes I get album request where it's all pictures of the bride. Well, I'm like, we need a couple pictures of the guys in there, so I gotta throw them in myself. And all couples are usually pretty happy that I do this because they don't realize from a storytelling perspective what would look good in an album. So I like to help them out. I throw a couple pictures in myself, but I flag all of those as blue. That way I know, hey, this is going in the album, but it was my pick. It wasn't the couple's pick. So it's not a must have in the album. The greens I always consider a must have. The blues are a, let's try and include it, but if we can't fit it in, it's okay. 
So if we take a look real quick right here, I'll just pick a quick little grouping of pictures. Maybe when we shot the whole bridal party, there's a whole bridal party lining up, just a couple of test shots. This to me is nothing, so I'm just skipping over it. It's nothing, still getting set up, people still trying to figure out what we're doing. There's my hand over the lens because the flare was so bad. And okay, this looks like my first decent picture. I'm gonna hit two on this one. Next one, also pretty good too. Next one, still looks pretty good too. So like I said, I'm gonna give a lot of twos here just because it's good, it could be a keeper. But then when I go back and actually look at it, I'm gonna get rid of the ones that are duplicates essentially because the last three pictures that I just picked are all very similar to each other. But I'm only going to send them one because they don't need all of it. And I can see right off the bat we have one guy not paying attention. I saw her eyes were closed in this picture. So I know I can go back and get rid of some images here. But this is what I do just to quickly go through my culling process. And we're going to just quickly keep going through. I know I got some good ones here Two again. Cool, bride and groom looking at each other, kissing. We'll hit a two on one of those. Everybody's looking at them. Two on that. And it's a nice quick process. I don't really know what's going on here. So let me hit zero on that. But it was a little bit different. We got a little bit of a cheering shot. We're going to hit two on that. Two again, two again. And two one more time. So as you see, I very quickly gather up a bunch of the same images. So I'm gonna show all these next to each other. And what I'll do is now I'll go in these pictures with a little bit more of a fine tooth comb and get rid of the ones that are just similar to the others because we don't need them. And that's really it. That's my whole calling process. It's just two star everything. If I don't have to send it to them, we go down to one star. It's good enough to send, but we don't need to send them multiple of the exact same thing. And then anything that's above and beyond just a here's your picture, that's where we bring in the three star, the four star, the five, and then the colors, like I said, are for a little bit more organization. I don't really use the flags or any of the other calling features, but this is my very simple system for organizing all my pictures within Lightroom. And I use this system for everything that I shoot. Now I don't use those colors for a real estate shoot because I'm not making an album from that but I'm still using two stars for everything that is going to be sent to my client. This is just my calling system. I hope this maybe helps out somebody because calling can be tricky. If you are not organizing your images, it's very easy to lose some of your pictures. You might say, oh, did I rate this one with stars or did I use colors? Oh, the next job, maybe I'll use flags on this one. If you're all over the place, your images are gonna very easily get lost and it's going to make for a nightmare when you have to go back and try and find something. I really hope this helped out somebody. If it did, I'd love it if you give me a thumbs up. And until the next video, peace. Bye.